All right, so in the last video, I took all of my individual frames. I saved them each as a JPEG, brought them into giftmaker.me, all nine of them, and that allowed me to set the timing of them. I settled on 800 milliseconds, so 0.8 seconds for each frame. I'm having it loop infinitely, which I recommend everyone does. No one likes an animation that suddenly stops. And then I just said create GIF animation, and then I downloaded it. And then I tested it by opening it in a web browser, because GIF animations are meant to be played in web browsers. All it is is a very simple format of image that's limited to 256 colors. But because it's such a simple distortion and simplification, compression of an image of pixels, we are able to put animation script on top of the file, which just tells it to play them in a certain order with a certain amount of time. And that's all animation is. So this is clumsy, but it shows me my story. Now it gets really clumsy as it transitions from the end to the beginning, from here to here. So that's, that's a problem, that's called a jump cut. All of a sudden when it gets to the end, it goes back to the beginning. So how can we get it to be more like a loop? Well, what I can do is simply upload the images again. So I wanna upload all of these these JPEGs again, but this time I'm gonna play them in reverse order. So they play through first one way, once they get to the end, then they start playing in the opposite order. So all these ones now get added onto the bottom, right? But I have to change the order. So first I'm gonna have a repeat of panel nine. There it is. Right? And then I just reverse the order. Huh. This is where my trackpad is kind of failing me a little bit. I'll do it this way, because it doesn't seem to like to have to go too far. And this is where putting numbers on your pencil test can be helpful. <laughs> This one got all the way up there. I'm not sure how. Let's see. Yeah, these got out of order. So it's good to know that as you're building your animation, you have control of all these things. Yeah. Okay, that looks good. It's going to move these on down.
So I'm playing them through in reverse order. So it starts with that one and it's going to end with that one. Right? Then it goes to this one. That should be the second to the last. Then it goes, sorry, this is making you guys dizzy. Then it goes to that one. That should be the third from the last. So they're just mere images of each other. Then it goes to horns. Then it goes to horns. Then it goes to fabric. So fabric needs to be above horns. So it's all about details. Then it goes horns move down. Then horns move down. And I think this one is probably here. Oh no, I was wrong. More contorts. Fabric. Oh, I think I I think I'm right. That to that. And I think these got messed up. Okay. So now when it plays, it's going to go forward and then it's going to go backwards. I might try to speed it up just a little bit. And then I say create GIF animation. And playing it forward and then print, playing it backwards is one way of having it be a continuous loop that doesn't have a clear beginning and end. So now if I look at the downloads, I see the GIF here. I can put that into my assignment folder. So I have one GIF that's looped and what I call set to reset and one that isn't. Come on, work with me. So I'm just going to use the same name I used for my first GIF, but I'm going to call it a loop at the end. A pencil test loop. And I'll give this a slightly different color. And how do I test it? By playing it in a web browser. And then it hovers a little bit longer at the beginning and at the end because those are two frames played back to back. Okay. So that is the animatic that I'm going to try to follow. You decide you want to change your approach. Like that's the thing you can reference. But I think in general that's pretty sound. I don't think there's too much change I'm trying to force into it. So I can proceed. I don't need to change my sketch in order to know how to animate it now. So now I'm in PhotoP. I've saved my work. Now I can start building my first frame. And I'm going to build it on top of the sketch. So what I do is I don't select the layer that's in the folder. I select the folder itself. And then I can bring assets into it. And my first frame is a very simple one for my plan. It is simply the, um, the original emoji that I made on that website for exercise two. That is my first frame. But in order to make it match everything else, what do I need to do? Well, first I have to rasterize it. Actually, before I rasterize it, I should probably size it to fit my sketch, right? So I'm going to take its opacity down. I'm going to hit Control T. This is where all these compositing skills come in. I'm going to shrink it down just to fit the intentions of my sketch. 
because one transformation in my sketches is the head got a little bit bigger in time. And I'll show you how we can control that. use a tolerance of just 10. I'm going to click on the gray and then hit delete. Hmm. I want a tolerance. I want contiguous checked on because otherwise it's selecting out the teeth as well. I want those teeth. All right, that's better. Okay. And I move that into folder one. It's a lot of organizing. So now that is frame one. Now this is what uh, our digital honors student showed us. If we want a background behind all of these, we can create a folder for the background or just an image for the background, right? So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to call it background, and I'm going to put into that background, you know, something that's going to appear behind all of my frames. And for me, it could be blank white, but it could also be something else, right? So why don't I just put for now, edit, fill, middle gray. because that will help me see any like little pixels that need to be erased. And so that's a background that's just always going to be turned on behind my, my finished frames. And it shows me I need to delete these little remnants that my magic wand didn't pick up at the edges. And that's where I start. for my sketch. And then I can augment this anyway. So if I look at it and I think, oh, it, it just looks kind of soft. Well, then maybe I can go to filter and go to smart sharpen, play with those settings a little bit so it's a little bit sharper. But remember, it's gonna be shown at screen resolution. You know, and then I see, oh, you know what? I had feathering turned on when I used the magic wand of two pixels. So I get that soft edge and I actually don't want that. So what can I do about it? I can go back in my history to where I used the magic wand. There it is. And I can deselect. Control D. And I can use the magic wand, but set the feather at zero pixels. So there's no softness. And then delete. And then I can bring that layer into layer one or into folder one. And I can put a background behind it. So a new folder, call it in that background layer, which can appear behind everything. I can add a new layer and I can say edit fill with middle gray at 100%. And it's still somewhat soft. So I'm just going to live.